Hey guys, welcome back to our past paper series. As you can see, we have May, June 2020, technical drawing paper one. So let's get into it. Number one, if a triangle with a perimeter of 198 millimeters is constructed with sides in the ratio of two to three to four, then the shortest side is, so what we must do is add these ratios, two plus three plus four will give us nine. 198 divided by nine is 22. So each unit or each part is 22. And the shortest part consists of two units, so it will be 22 by two, which is C, exactly 44. Number two, which of the following terms describes how construction lines should be drawn? The answer is B light. Number three, in the diagram above, the line indicating a cutting plane is labeled. So this is the line here. In a previous video, I said that the answer was three. That was a mistake. I was on a much smaller screen and I was not seeing properly. My apologies. The answer is two, which is B. So this is the cutting plane line. Number four, if a scale of 1 to 100 is used in a drawing exercise, then an object 2,000 millimeters long would be represented on paper as, so this is ratio, so anything on the paper must be multiplied by 100 in the real world, and anything in the real world must be divided by 100 to be the scale on the paper. So in this case, it's 2,000 millimeters long in the real world. So if we divide by 100, we'll get 20 millimeters. The answer is D. Number five, the terms cabinet and cavalier refer to which of the following views? The answer is A, oblique. All right? Cabinet drawings, you draw the receding lines half length. And in Cavalier, you draw them full length. In shape description, center lines are used to, the answer is C, locate positions and dimensions. Number six, C. Number seven, which of the following diagrams represents the construction of a tangent to a circle at a point on the circumference? The answer is A. This is the construction of a tangent on a point. Number eight. AB, this is AB here. AB is equal to the minor axis, so that's A. Number nine, in the diagram above, in order to divide AB, that's this line, in the ratio of four, to five to three by proportional divisions, it is necessary to first divide 72 by six, step off 12 equal divisions on AB, measure AB and divide it into three parts, step off 12 equal divisions on AC. So what you do is you add up the ratio. So four plus five is nine and three is 12. So there are 12 parts. And um, line AC, what we'll do is we'll make, divide line AC into 12 equal divisions and then proceed. So the answer is D, step off 12 equal divisions on AC. Number 10, item 10 refers to the following diagram, which is this. On which of the labeled planes is the plan shown? All right, we know the plan is the view from above. So that will be three. Three, the answer is C. Number 11, which of the following steps is not a part of the process for bisecting a line? Marking parallel lines, drawing a line through the intersecting arcs, drawing a perpendicular through the arcs, opening the compass to any suitable radius. So the answer is A, um, marking a parallel line, marking parallel lines is not part of the step or process for bisecting an angle. Number 12, 
the construction above shows that, so this is the construction, B, C, D, E is equal in area to B, D, E. So B, C, D, E is equal in area to B, D, E. That cannot be, that doesn't make sense. A, B, C, D, which is the square, the smaller square is equal in area to A, E, B. Again, does make sense. This, this triangle is actually half the area of the square. A, B, C, D is twice the area of A. Okay, so this is A, B, C, D here, and they're saying it's twice the area of this. Clearly not. So the answer has to be D. H, B, F, G is twice the area of A, B, C, D. Yes, that is the answer. Um, it's, it's just the only answer that makes sense, to be honest. Which of the following instruments is used to draw electrical and architectural symbols quickly? The answer would be A, a template. Number 14, which of the following instruments is used to draw irregular curves? The answer will be C, a flexi curve. If a rectangle with sides 100 millimeters and 75 millimeters is constructed accurately, then each of the diagonals should measure. The answer is D, 125. There's a formula for this. It says that D, which is the diagonal, is equal to the square root of side A squared plus side B squared. It's, it's very mathematical. Um, but the answer is D, 125. When a draftsman is drawing a true horizontal line, the pencil point should be guided by a T squared, B. Which of the following lines is used to outline a finished drawing? The answer is D, of course, this dark line here. Number 18, the fire emergency exit doors leading from a workshop should open outwards, should always open outwards. The answer is C. Number 19, which of the following statements are true about this symbol? Or this dimension in the diagram above. It is an abbreviation for radius. Uh, that's not true. It indicates that the surface is square. Yes, that's why we have the square here. It avoids using a second dimension. Also, yes, because you put this, you don't need to put the other square measurements. So the answer will be two and three. So that's C. Number 20, in the diagram above, a location dimension is represented by, so it's not this, this is a length, height, this is a, not a length. The answer is four, right? It gives the locations of these cylinders, and this is a very common question. Most of the questions are pretty common, actually. Number D, um, D four. Number 21, a right angle triangle can be constructed if given the parameter only, length of the chord, axis, hypotenuse, and one other and one other side. The answer is D. The hypotenuse and one other side. A man has to transform a 100 millimeter square drawing to the largest octagonal shape that it will contain. Which of the following instruments should he use to perform the exercise? The answer is C. He'll need a divider for the length of the lines and a set square, um, a 45 degree set square to be specific, yeah. Number 23, in technical drawing, the phrase curves meeting each other tangentially means that the curves D, will just touch each other. Number 24, what term describes the points E and F? So this is E and this is F. And they will be focal points. Focal points, number 24A. Number 25, if an ellipse is drawn with a major axis of 100 millimeters and a minor axis of 75, then the distance between the focal points 
to the nearest millimeter is? Now, this is a very tricky question. There's actually a formula for this. And it says that A, A being the distance between the foci, is the square root of B squared minus C squared. B squared would be the length of the major axis, and C squared would be the length of the minor axis. So you, yeah, yeah. So you square them, then you subtract it, then you find the square root of the answer, and you will get D66, right? D66, that's how you work this question out. So number 25, D. When a solid is cut by a cutting plane parallel to its base and the top is removed, the remaining part is called a frostum. It's a frostum if the cut is parallel. If the cut is not parallel, then it is truncated. It's truncated if it's not parallel. So the answer is A, a frostum. Number 27, the lines labeled in the diagram indicate various center lines for the object, right? So we have EF, BC, A, CD, AB, and GH. Which of these lines are drawn axially? The answer is D, GH. It runs along the length of the cylinder. It's, it's the axial center line. So number 27, D. Number 28, the diagram above shows how to find the center of an arc with radius r, which is tangential to, so this is the radius, this is the arc, this is the radius r. It's tangential to two straight lines meeting at any angle. Two straight lines meeting at any angle, so the answer is C. Number 29, a material safety data sheet provides guidance on Safe handling of potential hazards in the workplace. Safe handling of potential hazards in the workplace. The answer is C. Number 30, which of the following drawings shows triangles of equal area between parallel lines? So we have A, we have B, we have C, and we have D. The answer is A. This is a very common question. Um, we would have gone through it before, but basically... These two triangles share the same base and they have the same height. So as a result, they, are, they have the same area, right? None of the other triangles share these qualities. Um, C, they share the same height, but not the same base. And for D, same thing, same height, not the same base. So the answer is A. Number 31, which of the following terms are not names of polygons? Kite and rhombus, isosceles and scalene, heptagon and decagon, eccentric and concentric. I will say the answer is D, eccentric and concentric. These refer to circles and circles are not polygons. So number 31, D. Number 32, the bisector of line AB is shown correctly by the drawing in, that will be B. So this is the bisector, this is correct. Number 33, the name of the point where all of the lines converge in a perspective drawing is the D, vanishing point. So all of the lines will converge at the vanishing point. The answer is D, 33D. Number 34. In the ellipse above, which sum of distances is equal to AB? So AB is the major axis. And so something to note, um, the distance from any point on the circumference of an ellipse to both foci is equal to the length of the major axis. So um, F1C plus F2C, so F1 and F2 are the foci points, 
So F or the four key rather, F1C plus F2C would be equal to AB. So the answer is F1C plus F2C. So the answer is D, number 34D. 35, which of the following solids is represented by the drawing above? Um, so it's a square-based pyramid. It's a truncated square pyramid. Truncated square pyramid. Um, it's not a rectangular pyramid. And it's not a right truncated pyramid. Anyway, B, number 35B. Number 36, the drawing above shows the development of a truncated cylindrical pipe. All right, so we know it's a cylinder because there are no sides to it. It's just one smooth thing with a smooth development with a cut, so it's a cylindrical pipe. Number 37, which of the following diagrams best represents an external and an internal tangent? The answer is B. So this is our external tangent and this is our internal tangent. Number 38, what is the correct order of the following steps involved in drawing a tangent to a circle from any point outside the circle? Um, so we have joined the center to the point in outside the circle, draw a circle and choose a point. Okay, so this would be the first step. Bisect the line which joins center to point and, All right, so the first step is two. All right, so the answer is either B or C. Um, so we first we're gonna draw the circle and choose a point outside the circle. And then we are going to join the center of the circle to the point. And the last thing we're going to do is bisect the line which joins them. So it's 2, 1, 3. So the answer is B. Number 38, B. Number 39, which of the following instruments is used to quickly draw items such as bolt heads, nuts, electrical, and architectural symbols? That's a stencil A. I think we had this question before. Number 40, in the construction above, the angle X is... Right, I hope you can see this here. So the answer is 75, and I will explain it to you. So there's a horizontal and a vertical line here, which created a 90-degree angle. After having the 90-degree angle, a 60-degree angle was created. That's the arc marked 4. And after having this 60-degree angle, they bisected the angle between the 60 degrees and the 90 degree angle, All right? So 90 minus 60 is 30. And if you bisect 30, you will get two 15 degree angles. So basically what they did here was they subtracted 15 degrees from 90 degrees. So the answer is 75, number 40, D. The eccentricity of FPPO, this is FPPQ, sorry, FPPQ in the diagram above, the eccentricity is the ratio one to one. Eccentricity, ratio one to one A. Uh, number 42, the diagram above shows the intersection of the three isometric axes. What is the value of this symbol? I think it's beta. And if there were a horizontal line here, then these lines would have receded at 30 degrees. So 30 or 90 minus 30 would leave 60. So the answer is C, 60 degrees. Number 43, the true shape of the cut surface AA, that's here, on the right cone above is, all right, so the cone was cut, it was 
truncated and we want to know what would what will this surface look like when you look at it um, it's not a a looks like a sphere um, B looks good C has a flat side and so does D so the answer is B right so this cut here this surface will look like B so number 43 B number 44 which of the following drawings represent represents a scalene triangle so a scalene triangle has no equal sides or angles this triangle has two equal sides this triangle has three equal angles um, C looks good okay the answer is C number 44 C this is our scalene triangle Number 45, which of the following polygons can be constructed given in the circle above that has a radius of 8P, so this is 8, and this is P, so this is a radius, uh, and the answer will be an octagon, octagon, an eight-sided polygon. Number 46, the representative ratio for a scale of one millimeter equals one meter is... Um, okay, so there are 1,000 millimeters in one meter, so the ratio would have to be 1 to 1,000. That's C. So 45D, 46C. Number 47, which of the following properties is true for a plane figure which undergoes a linear reduction only? Right, so we are reducing the size and the reduction is linear. The proportions are changed. Nope. Dimensions remain the same. Nope. The answer is B. The proportions remain the same. Number 48. The sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 360. All, right? All the internal angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. Number 49, triangle ABC is drawn within a semicircle of diameter 100. So this is the diameter of the circle. It's also the hypotenuse of the triangle. AB is equal to 80. This is AB. Um, what is the length of BC? So this other side will be 60. I did the math um yeah it's tricks trigonometry so number 49 a 60. number 50 which of the following diagrams shows the development of a square pyramid um okay so <laughs> the answer is d a, a square yeah a square pyramid the answer is d this is the only well, actually, this is the only pyramid here to begin with, and the base is square, so number 50D. Number 51 refers to this diagram, which uh, the diagram above shows the construction of a regular hexagon given the length of the sides, perimeter, and altitude length of the diagonals. Okay, it's the length of the sides. I would say that they give the circle and the length of the sides oh actually anyway the answer is a right they give the length of the sides so what they did they use the length of the side as radius and the ends of the line as centers drew two arcs where they intersected um, they use that as the center of the circle and then they marked off the lengths of the other sides. Number 51A. 52. In which of the following projections is the object illustrated above drawn? Okay, so this is the object. This is an isometric drawing. B, isometric. The purpose of the number 53, the purpose of the construction above when completed is to 
draw a tangent. A, draw a tangent to the circle from L. Um, yeah, so number 53A. 54, the oblique lines of a 100 millimeter cube in cabinet drawing will measure. So when drawing cabinet oblique, receding lines are drawn at half length. So it's a cube, the receding lines are 100 millimeters. So the answer is B, 50. The diagram above shows a triangle constructed from a given altitude and base angles. What is the value of X? Okay, so we have a triangle here. This is X. Um, these two lines are parallel, right? Um, if this angle is 45, then it means that this angle is also 45. And this entire angle is 180. So 180 minus 45 will mean that X is 135C. The diagram above shows the development of a square transitional piece, right cone, cut parallel, um, square to round, right? The answer is A. The answer is A. It's a square transitional piece. Number 57. Which of the following developments shows a cylinder which is cut obliquely at both ends? Okay, this is not a cylinder, not a cylinder. Not a cylinder. The answer is D. 57D. This is the only cylinder here. And it's cut at both ends. Number 58. The drawing above represents a room which measures 2,500 by 4,000 millimeters. Uh, the scale used in the drawing is, so on the drawing, it's actually 80 by 50, but in reality, it's 2,500 by 4,000. Uh, the scale would have to be 1 to 50, because 50 by 50 is 2,500, and 50 by 80 is 4,000. Number 59, in the diagram above, EF, EF, to EF1 is in the ratio 3 to 4. The length of EF1 is, okay, so EF is 3, EF is 3, and it's 45. So that means 45 divided by 3 is 15. So each part is 15. So if this is 45 and EF1 is four parts, four by 15 is 60. Or you could just add 15 to 45, and the answer is 60. So number 59C. Number 60, final question. Which of the following layouts represents the correct orthographic projection of a shaped block? Um, so we have A, this looks like our front elevation and our plan, but our side elevation it's in the wrong place. We have B, front elevation, side elevation, plan. Uh, let's just look at C quickly. Nope, nope. So number 60, the answer is B, front elevation, side elevation, and plan. Number 60, B, and this brings us to the end of our paper. This is 2020 paper one, technical drawing. Thank you if you made it all to all the way to the end, and I hope that you would have learned from it.